Hey, I'm J.D. Frost, and this is The Accountability Show. Thank you so much for tuning in again. This is episode eight, and normally I would have a guest on here, but I don't today, so I'm going to give you some real-life examples from our actual clients and what they have experienced by not opening a bank account, by moving money into their personal account and not using a business bank account, kind of the pros and cons of each one of those, and we're going to be talking about those today. But if you want to be a guest on the show, please do let us know. Comment below, send me a message, call us on the phone, do whatever. We would love to have you on the show. I would love to talk to you about your specific situation on the show. Um, so we've been talking about the what, the why, the how of different bank accounts, personal account versus a business account how to do that, how to actually make that happen, why it's important, what in the world are we talking about, right? That Those are the things that we've covered in prior episodes. And so each month we're going through each one of these different topics and answering those questions for each topic. And this is providing, with you, uh, providing you a firm accounting foundation for your business. That's the whole point. Like we want to create a foundation that is not going to be destroyed very easily as you are growing your business. Because when you're starting out your business, you gotta have the end in mind. And so creating these separate bank accounts is extremely important. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Number one, the first example is I had a client that was running all of their business and personal items all the way through their personal bank account. Now when they had it in their personal bank account, when it came time to do their taxes, we had to spend a lot of time and they had to spend a lot of money for us to create their income statement and their balance sheet for their business. We had to go through each one of their bank statements. We had to cipher out the difference between the personal expenses and the business expenses and the personal revenue and the business revenue. We had to figure all that out and that cost them a lot of money. It cost them about 3,600 bucks because we had to do bookkeeping for them basically for the whole year. And that's a pain in the ass. It's not something that you want to experience. So if you create these bank accounts separately from the beginning, then you can have this already separated. There's no question at all. And you know exactly where you stand throughout the whole year. Another example that I had is I had a client that actually got audited. Their Schedule C on their personal return got audited, and they did not have a separate bank account. They had everything going through their personal bank account. Now, when they pulled all those bank statements, not only did the IRS look through their personal, their business expenses, they also looked through their personal expenses because it was all in a personal bank account. So this opened them up to a lot more scrutiny by the IRS during the audit process. It caused the audit process to last a lot longer and... The IRS recognized that that client had recorded their expenses twice. They had double counted expenses. And the way they were able to see that they double counted the expenses is that they went through their personal bank accounts. They didn't have two separate accounts. So they could tell very clearly and easily that they had double counted their expenses. That ended up costing that client a little over $30,000. Now, if they had separate bank accounts, would they have caught that or not? I don't think so because they would have had just the business activity and that what's what, what would have been counted as a deduction during that audit. So while it's a pain, having different bank accounts, personal and business does have a purpose to it. It's something that you need to do. You have to do this when you start a business. It further supports the fact that you actually have a business. And so not only in those two real life examples, but also I'll give you a third example. If you have one bank account and you don't separate it, but you have an entity, if somebody sues you, they could say that you really don't have an entity because you commingled funds. You had them all going through the same account. That gives you even further evidence as to how much liability you put yourself into and that is unknown liability that you don't even know that you have because you have not separated those bank accounts and those transactions and I want to give you a little bit of a bonus tip on this episode as well I had somebody recently asked me like hey should I have different bank accounts 
at different banks. Yes, you should. You should try to have a relationship with every bank that you possibly can in some form or fashion. It will help you as a business owner when you need additional capital to have those separate relationships. Now, that doesn't mean to have an operating account and a savings account at every single bank in town. But what I'm trying to tell you is when you have a business, it is a good idea to have three to four different banks that you have a relationship with. And the best way to form a relationship with a bank is to open an account with them and have money going in there and coming out of that bank throughout the whole relationship. Some of them, it'd be great for you just to, if you decide to implement profit first, have your separate bank accounts at different banks so you can't get to them as easily. And if you've read the book Profit First, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So it is a great idea to have separate accounts at separate banks. Your main operating account and your main savings account need to be at the same bank, though, so that you can easily transfer funds. So th those are two things that you need to remember um, when, you are, when you're thinking about creating these separate bank accounts. That's just an additional tip that I want to talk to you about today. Um, this is a little bit shorter show. Thank you so much for watching the accountability show. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about check spread templates. <laughs> check spread templates. I got to check my notes every once in a while. Check spread templates, how to record activity and the how, why, and what of check spread templates. This is a way for you to track your activity throughout the whole year. So at the end of each month, if you're afraid of using QuickBooks or you don't want to use QuickBooks, it's a very inexpensive way to create a balance sheet and income statement for your business. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. I really appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel so that you can know and turn on your alerts too, right? Yeah. Turn on your alerts and subscribe to the channel so you know when a new episode is dropped. Thanks for watching.